Kitco Mining special coverage of resourcing tomorrow is brought to you by Eris Mining. Valley is seeking greater base metals opportunity. This is Paul Harris for Kitco Mining at Resourcing Tomorrow in London. And joining me today is Mark Kutafani, Chair of Valley Base Metals. Mark, welcome to Kitco. Thank you very much. Now, um, Valley Base Metals is a relatively recently created company. It was spun out or created out of Valley, uh, a very well-known Brazilian mining conglomerate. Why was the company created? Well, the first thing is Vale has traditionally been a very significant iron ore producer and still is. And in some ways, the base metals business, which it originally bought from Inco, has been a little bit lost inside this much bigger iron ore business. So the idea of doing something a little bit differently, breaking out a different structure, is to give it more flexibility, that is the base metals business, to pursue opportunities that look quite different to the iron ore business and allow the growing of skills in, in this part of the business that can do things differently, be quicker on their feet in terms of the process and approach. I mean, in iron ore, logistics are so important and in valley based metals, logistics are important, but mining methods and a whole range of other technical issues are more important relative to the performance we have to achieve and the markets are very different. So they're saying, let's build a skills base that's dedicated to being world's best in that part of the business. And they thought maybe doing something a little bit different is the right way to attract the right people into that business. How independent is Valley Base Metals from Valley, the parent company? And there I'm thinking of, you know, access to capital. Do you have to apply for funds from the mother company or, you know, well, the intention is to, to set up a standalone business, and that's the intention of either an IPO or some type of liquidity event in three or four years. But at the, at the moment, 87% shareholder, of course, they have a, an important say in the business. We've got three Vale um, executives on the board. Yeah. We have two independent executive, uh, non-executive directors and myself as an independent uh, chair. Uh, we also have one of the representatives from one of the new investors, Manara. So it's quite a good mix uh, in the board. And so it has an independence in terms of the way it thinks about its business debates and, and debates with the, the major shareholder. But at the end of the day, 87% shareholder, they're still pretty important and we still have to justify our case which is entirely appropriate. If it's not to Vale, it'll be to broader shareholders anyway. So I don't think that creates any major issues. Now you mentioned the sort of the recent uh, or new investor, Manara. Um, what was the, the thinking there about what they can potentially bring to the table over and above just having a sort of checkbook? Well, to be fair, they, were, they won an open bidding process. So they brought money to the table and, and bid for the assets. But they also have a, a broader relationship or Saudi Arabia has a broader relationship with Brazil, which has a broader relationship with Vale looking to support them with raw materials in their industrialization objective. So those connections all work and we provide or we produce materials, copper, nickel, precious metals that they want in the future. So they're also been quite smart in, in, in making sure they've got access to the materials we produce to help their industrialization. So it's quite strategic in their context. Is there a sort of geopolitical aspect to that? Because Brazil obviously is a BRICS country, Saudi Arabia potentially wants to become a BRICS country and is certainly looking to distance itself a little bit from the US sphere of influence. Um, is there a geopolitical aspect at work here? I think there's a geopolitical aspect to everything we do and everything we're involved in. I think there's no doubt the world is becoming what I call multipolar. And uh, in that context, I think the US, China, India, Europe, Middle East generally are all, um, if you like, areas or um, regions that are charting their own course, which is appropriate for them. And Indonesia is another one. And so they're all looking at how they craft their strategies in their own logical self-interest. And as a supplier of raw materials for everything, literally, it's in our interest to understand, to connect with, to, to be respectful of their values and beliefs, 
and deliver and create long-term partnerships. So that's what we do. We're, we're providers of raw materials to help people do everything. Um, and having relationships that are respectful and appropriate is what we need to do and, and is certainly going to be a key to us being successful in the future. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, Brazil isn't currently one of the countries that qualify under the US IRA Act for as a, 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 a partner country for, for funding. Is that something that Brazil actively wants to obtain or given it's perhaps a broader geopolitical vision, is that something where it, it uh, would rather be sort of neutral in, in the, the emerging resource conflict between the East and the West? So the first thing I would say is I'm not the world's expert on Brazil's political intentions, but what I would say is that uh, as an observer, they've been engaging quite broadly they certainly have a relationship with the US. They are part of the BRICS grouping, but they are very conscious of supporting countries from all, reg from all regions with raw materials. That's what they do. Uh, and it's about best price, right relationship, making sure value chains are being respected uh, in terms of um, the correct practices. Uh, and I think they're like many other countries at the moment who are saying, you know what, we're going to chart our own direction. We want a good relationship with the US. We want a good relationship with China. We want a good relationship with Indonesia and other countries. And we think we can do that in terms of how we're setting ourselves up. The other thing, uh, and the point you make about the IRA, they're not part of the US free trade agreement uh, world. Whether they would want to pursue that it would, I think, be a matter of where are their immediate priorities. I would hope they would like to see that occur. And in, the, in terms of um, the IRA, there are exemptions allowable for countries that they're comfortable with. That may or may not be possible with Brazil. But again, I think Brazil is looking outward, looking at how it can play a, a, a significant role in the world. And that shouldn't stop them from engaging in a constructive way with the US. That's uh, an increasingly complex scenario, isn't it, uh, for, for mining companies to navigate. Now, um, the separation of value-based minerals from Valley, the parent company, that's uh, I mean, part of a growing trend, if you like, from the, the big diversified companies. Tech Resources obviously wants to split its base metals business from its coal business. Um, Glencore said it wants to separate its coal division from everything else. Um, what is driving these changes? Um, I think people looking at the skills they need to be successful in certain segments. In the case of Vale, it was a recognition that they weren't growing the skills that they needed inside the iron ore business and therefore probably had to think a little bit differently about how they built their skills base, where they drew from. And by the way, it doesn't mean we can't still move between the two um, groups, but what they were looking for was to build another business that was either a sister or a brother to the iron ore business and they felt the right way to do that was to do it in a separate structure where they could be more flexible, uh, tailor the business to be successful in a very different business. And so I think it's, it's purely down to that. In other cases, let's say tech, different types of businesses, coal, uh, attracting different commentary and so for them, probably a different set of uh, drivers Glencore, again, another set of drivers. So I think looking at the circumstances, each group is acting again in their logical self-interest in terms of attracting shareholders and getting a premium price for their various businesses. Now, Valley Based Metal is a relatively new company. What do you want the business to look like in five years? What are the goals? Where do you want to get to? So firstly, I think it's really important continue to improve safety continue to improve our sustainability performance and whether that's reducing our footprint, reducing energy consumption, reducing water consumption, proving generally the things we do, improve our relationship with our local communities and we'd like to grow the business. And I think within the assets themselves, we have certainly potential to improve 30 to 40%, whatever that number may be. And we're doing our asset review now, but the targets beyond 2030 900,000 uh, tonnes of copper, 300,000 tonnes of nickel have been pretty well put out there. The question will be, when do we think we can achieve those objectives? We haven't put a hard number in. We're doing our asset review. By the end of 24, I'd like to think we could put more shape and clarity around when we would achieve those targets. But to put it pure and simply, 
let's do the best with what we've got. I think there's a lot more we can do. Let's look at accretive development opportunities, new projects and partnerships, uh, again, with players that we know are in areas that we understand. And then the third point would be, and we've said we're open to M&A, but I'd like to see us drive a lot more value internally before we step too far out, because then that may dilute your focus a bit. So we're very careful of that. Well, in the copper aspect, you've certainly got a, a lot of organic opportunity in-house in Brazil, in yeah. Asia, maybe other places as well. Well, what's uh, going to be the sort of priorities in terms of growing your business from or organically? So copper in Brazil, um, priority ticket on the basis of copper is a great place to be. We've got great resources. We see more potential in each of those resources. So first priority, because we can see how to get there relatively quickly. Indonesia, the growth opportunities, the partnership with Huar, with uh, PTVI and the other groups, very positive. So we'll drive there. In Sudbury, Manitoba, Voji Bay, uh, a lot more history. The resources have been, uh, in the case of Sudbury, been around for almost 100 years. So the opportunities look different. So we're looking at things differently from a geological perspective. We're looking at how we mine differently, change some of the technical parameters. We're also looking at new resources and new ways to think about those assets. So the question for us in Sudbury is how do we create another 100 years? And so they have quite different issues. So short term, copper, Indonesia's growth, changes and improvements in a Sudbury. We can do things at Voisey Bay. Manitoba is, in my view, a long-term exploration play that's got great potential. So each part of the, the jigsaw puzzle has, we think, a specific set of opportunities that we're looking to, to build on. Let's talk a little bit about innovation, Mark. Um, the mining sector has traditionally been sort of quite slow innovating. I imagine part of that is because you've got the sunk cost in the mine. It's very difficult and expensive to retrofit uh, new technology in there. But uh, we're, we're doing some of the, or some of the objectives you've talked about, like uh, re-envisaging re um, the, the, the operations in Sudbury in Canada. Um, to what extent or not does innovation and new technology play a part in that, you know, looking at what's possible or what's perhaps possible in five or 10 years down the line? So let me, let me sort of cast my mind back to my last job. Um, our reimagined mining to improve people's lives was very much a significant commitment to new innovation, new technology. We've been mining the same way for 100 years, it's just the gears got bigger. But the incremental returns on size uh, are diminishing. And in fact, in some cases with AI, we're looking at smarter ways with smaller gear that could be more productive because of the flexibility aspect. So I think we're relearning, but we're also looking at new flow sheets, changing our footprints. And I think that's a very exciting opportunity that Anglo developed in terms of coarse particle flotation, uh, the, the um, uh, bulk ore sorting and a whole range of new technologies to reduce water and energy. And I think we've got the same set of opportunities in Vale. All bodies are a bit different, so they'll look a bit different, but the same approach and process, I think, can make a significant difference at Vale as well. Do you see opportunities to you know, beg, borrow, steal technology from other sectors that perhaps aren't used in mining typically? Well, I think, it's not an opportunity. I think it's absolutely critical because in so many cases, other industries are so far ahead of us. I think there's so much we can look at and apply differently to improve our operations. I think that's where a lot of our work comes. We, we developed a thing called an open forum where we had people from, let's say the issue we were dealing with was water. So we would have more than 50% of the people, smart people from all sorts of industries helping us reduce our consumption of water. The one thing we did is we made sure that more than 50% of the participants were outside of mining because we wanted new ideas. So we had those that understood mining and had a perspective with those that were new to mining and the interaction and the ideas that came out of those interactions were fantastic. That's something we will likely uh, follow up with at Vale as well. One other thing I've seen that's perhaps quite new or novel with Valley based metals is you recently announced a deal with Aero Copper, which is a a uh, sort of junior mid-sized copper producer in Brazil for the development or co-development of the Furnas project in the Carajas district. And the Carajas has been a, a stronghold, a powerhouse of Valley over a number of years. So why the strategy there? What, what, what's the aim there? So, so capital deployment, capital allocation, priorities. We have many new opportunities. 
So we will focus our efforts on those assets that will move the dial for us at scale. And at the same time, we see those sorts of opportunities, a bit smaller scale, technologies a bit different. Why not go with a partner who we think can develop and drive them to full potential, but let's keep a stake and participate in the upside royalty and, and part of the ownership, which we think gets that balance right. Those assets that have got potential keep the, the, the countries happy because the asset's being developed and that you use it or lose it logic, I think is still very important. And then secondly, we see value for the investment that we've already made through exploration, but at the same time, it doesn't take us away from the, the bigger games that we have to play to, to really create more significant value for the group. So try to get that balance right. So if that's successful, there could be more similar deals to come in, in Brazil or elsewhere of yeah. that nature. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it doesn't have to be that specifically. It could be a downstream opportunity. It might be a marketing opportunity. We, we've got to become much more open and if you like, have more of an entrepreneurial mindset to again drive margins or returns on our capital base. Okay. Well, I imagine it's been a very busy year for you, Mark, and, and for Valley Based Metals. 2024 is just around the corner. What are some of the things we can expect to see out of Valley Based Metals next year? Focus on improvement in our operations in copper. And already with Salobo, we've made some good progress. We'll be talking about that next week and the Valley Day on the 5th. And I think that's really important to us. How we will approach the Sudbury story, I think is another important one that's developing and will be developed over the next few months. We'll talk about that next year. Uh, progress on the new builds and what we're doing with our partners in Indonesia will also be important. But during the course of 24, it's about shaping what the future will look like and the steps that we're going to take to get there. So by the end of 24, I think that story will be very clear. We're still in the works in progress, but by the end of 24, the direction and the value we think we can create will, I think, be very clear to the market. Is there any timeline on Valley Based Metals being its own independent, publicly traded company? Um, there is a rough timeline. The chief executive of Vale SA, Eduardo Bartholomeus, said, look, three years, three to five years in that range. There's no rush, but we don't want to take forever either. And he's saying what we'll do is we'll understand the potential. We'll look at all the things and that's what we want the team to identify. And then we will look at whatever that liquidity event will be, we'll have to be supportive of driving and supporting the strategy for value creation. So uh, in my guess, three to five years, and the shape of what we do will be dependent on how big the opportunities are. And any idea on where that will be listed here in London, New York, Toronto? Not yet. Um, obviously, the fact we're here in London says something about a good jurisdiction to list in. But I wouldn't lock us down to that because in the end, things do change. And so in the next three to five years, we'll keep ourselves open. But again, it's great to be here in London. It's great to be in Toronto. It's great to be in New York. I'll leave all of the options open. OK, well, I wish you the best of luck with that, Mark, and uh, I wish you a very successful 2024. Thank, Thank you very you, much for joining us today. Thanks, Paul. Great to be here. And this is Paul Harris for Kitco Mining at Resourcing tomorrow in London. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Kitco Mining special coverage of resourcing tomorrow is brought to you by Eris Mining.